So hello and welcome. Uh, there are many questions uh, that have been asked already concerning bacteria. What microscope do you need to be able to see bacteria? Are you able to see bacteria, for example, with a simple, relatively low cost and a straightforward, simple microscope like this one over here? That's uh, a common question. So what do you need to invest in in order to see bacteria? And what magnification do I need? Well, um, I have to admit the answer is not quite that easy uh, because it depends on several factors. Uh, and I'd like to give you now more uh, more or less a complete answer concerning this. Um, first of all, what magnification do you need to see bacteria? Well, theoretically, you can already see bacteria or most bacteria with uh, a total magnification of 100x. Um, however, um, you're just able to see them as points and as small dots, so you can actually see that something is there if you actually know what you're looking for, uh, but probably not very well. And uh, that's the first thing. And the second thing is, is um, you're probably not able to see the shape of the bacteria at this magnification. But you see, size is only one of the factors uh, because the real problem with bacteria is, is that they're transparent. They're so small that even if they have pigments, even if they were to synthesize pigments, um, because of their small size, these pigments are generally not strong enough to absorb a lot of light. And therefore, on the bright field microscopy, generally, bacteria are rather difficult to see. Having said that, um, it is possible to see them, and if you close the condenser a lot, so the condenser is this little uh, diaphragm that you see beneath uh, the microscope, there's a condenser with a condenser um, aperture diaphragm, and if you close this diaphragm, um, then you get diffraction patterns, um, and uh, these diffraction patterns, they actually uh, will help you to see the bacteria. Um, however, yeah, these are a little bit like optical artifacts, however, that you see. So if you want to see bacteria really well, you need a magnification more than 100x. Um, and um, ideally, you also need uh, to either stain the bacteria. Usually you use methylene blue or there are also other stains available. Or you use so-called optical staining techniques. Now, optical staining techniques... Um, is, as they say, is an optical way of increasing the contrast. And usually you do that by using so-called phase contrast optics. Phase contrast optics are very expensive. But they're usually not found uh, on, on regular, regular, I mean, what's a regular microscope, but on low-cost microscopes. Um, so uh, you can, however, uh, buy them. Uh, you have to talk to your microscope dealer and they will sell you phase contrast optics. And in addition to that, you also need a special phase contrast condenser, which has to be mounted beneath the stage. And if you have phase contrast optics, then these optics will convert differences in refractive index because the bacteria, even though they're transparent, they have a different refractive index than the surrounding water. These optics will convert a different refractive index into differences in brightness. So this is a really cool method and I'm going to just show you now a few pictures that I've taken several years ago using my university's phase contrast microscope. And so there are a couple of pictures that I'm going to show you right now and you can actually see that the bacteria are quite, um, how should I say, well visible. And I used the magnification of 1000x and phase contrast optics and so they can be seen without problems. So these are unstained bacteria that you see right now. So they are alive um, and uh, they can be seen moving around in uh, the liquid medium. And uh, yeah, and it's possible to observe them quite well. Now, most people do not have phase contrast optics. Um, and in this case, you have, if you want to see bacteria well, um, you have to uh, also use, uh, for example, methylene blue to stain the bacteria. Methylene blue will actually stain the DNA of the bacteria and because uh, the a cell is filled with DNA, it will stain blue, and this increases the possibility to, for the bacteria to be uh, made visible. Having said that, um, most amateur microscopists um, don't have immediate access uh, to uh, methylene blue or definitely not phase contrast optics, so what can you do? Uh, my advice is the following, is that you take uh, a little bit of, of uh, yogurt, uh, yogurt contains uh, bacteria, and that you take a very small sample of yogurt and that you dilute it a little bit with, with water and, and, make, uh, yeah, and observe it directly under the microscope and uh, you try to close the condenser. 
And if you're very lucky and if you do not disturb the yogurt a lot, um, you can sometimes see chains of bacteria. Um, yeah, and because uh, these are cocci, which around bacteria, and as they divide, uh, sometimes they tend to stick together and uh, they form short chains. And if you see that, then uh, they are actually easily identifiable as bacteria, because otherwise it's kind of difficult to distinguish uh, the fat droplets of the yogurt from the bacteria. It's kind of difficult to do, but if you actually see certain small chains of bacteria, uh, chains of structures, then it, that's a strong indication that these could be indeed be bacteria. Okay, um, so to summarize uh, the whole thing a little bit, um, it is possible to observe bacteria using regular bright field, but mm, you got to be patient, and it requires a little bit of yeah, uh, yeah, uh, how shall I say, patience uh, and also training to uh, that you're actually able to recognize the bacteria. Phase contrast optics is uh, much better, but expensive, and also staining would be a possibility. Okay, so um, having said that, at the end, I would like to now clarify also one another point. Um, many people um, who want to start amateur microscopy are interested in observing bacteria because that's what is commonly, yeah, in general society and in the public. Bacteria are, of course, an interesting, uh, well discussed concept known as. Uh, some of them causing diseases and so on. Um, however, I personally think that they're rather uninteresting uh, organisms uh, to look at under the microscope. I think paramecia, ciliates, and so on, they're much more interesting to observe. They're also significantly larger because they're eukaryotes. Um, so the cells are much larger and you can actually also see what's going on inside the cell. Um, so my um, advice would be is, is, yeah, sure, if you're interested in observing bacteria, uh, please do that, obviously. Um, but uh, uh, don't uh, overlook uh, the other things that you can observe with a bright field microscope. I think there are more interesting things to look at. So don't uh, be disappointed. That's essentially what I want to make clear here. Don't be disappointed if uh, the bacteria that you see with your microscope are not that totally exciting. Okay. Having said that, um, the pictures that I showed you concerning with uh, that I've taken with phase contrast in, in bacteria, don't expect uh, these image qualities or these images with a regular bright field microscope. It's not possible to see such nice contrast um, with a bright field microscope. Okay. Um, having said that, I wish you uh, yes, I wish you a nice day and all, and all the best. Bye bye.